Good evening, my real news media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update. And in the news of this evening, man and woman arrested after gun and a scamming documents seized in St. James Reed. A man and a woman were arrested in connection with the seizure of a handgun and a lottery scamming paraphernalia during an operation at a coconut palm, Mount Salem, in St. James on Monday. According to the Mount Salem police, in addition to the weapon, 49 mm rounds of ammunition were also seized. The identities of the duo arrested are being withheld pending further investigations. Holness rejects Integrity Commission report on statutory declarations to seek a legal advice. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says he is to seek legal advice as he today rejected some of the findings of the investigation by the Integrity Commission into his statutory declarations. Speaking in Parliament this afternoon, Holness defended his financial affairs, stressing that he has not engaged in anything untoward. He emphasized that he has been open about his finances and has always maintained a clean record. He rejected any connection to corruption or illicit enrichment. The Commission's investigation report into the income and assets declarations submitted by Holness for 2019 to 2022 was tabled in the House of Representatives this afternoon. The investigation looked into allegations that Holness owned assets disproportionate to his lawful earnings. It also looked into allegations Holness made a false statement by way of omissions. Among other things, the Integrity Commission flagged the movement of millions of dollars among companies connected to Holness, which it said has not been fully explained. One instance involves $72 million transferred from Positive Media Limited to Imperium Limited. The Commission is urging Parliament to support its referral of a report on Holness's income and assets to the Financial Investigations Division. It said there can be no finality in the certification of assets for 2019 to 2022 without a further probe. Responding to the report, Holness told the Parliament that he will be challenging several findings in the Commission's investigation report into his income and assets declarations citing errors made by the entity. I reject this finding, Holness declared. 15-year-old boy allegedly breaks into home and steals iPhone. A 15-year-old boy of Bottom Town, Clarkstown in Trelawney is facing burglary charges after allegedly gaining access to a woman's residence and attempting to steal her daughter's iPhone. Reports are that about 11.45 p.m., on Sunday, September 15, the woman was sleeping when she heard her daughter screaming. She allegedly ran to her daughter's room and turned on the lights when she saw the 15-year-old boy with her daughter's iPhone 14 in a corner of the room. The police were summoned and the teen was taken into custody and was subsequently charged. He was scheduled to appear at the Trelawney Parish Court today. Demolition exercise commenced at the Falmouth Fishing Beach. The Trelawney Municipal Corporation commenced the demolition of illegal structures at the Falmouth Fishing Beach on Tuesday morning, citing that occupiers of the structures steal electricity and are without bathroom facilities. Mayor of Falmouth and the chairman of the TMC, Councilor Colin Gager, said notices were recently served for the demolition of the illegal structures. The beach is located near the Falmouth All Age School. The informal settlers near the school have also been accused of playing loud music during school hours and defecating on the school compound. Members of the Chelani Police Division were on hand to provide the security for the demolition crew. When the demolition crew arrived on the scene Tuesday morning, the occupiers had already leveled four of the structures. Citing that he didn't want to give any problem, one fisherman, who gave his name as Ronaldo, voluntarily pushed down his building on the beach. CPFSA responding to horrifying video recorded bullying of student. The Child Protection and the Family Services Agency says it has identified the school in which a video recorded bullying incident occurred and is sending a team there today to provide counseling to the students. 
In the video, which has been making the rounds on social media, a boy is seen being punched and kicked by a bigger boy. Some of the students who were standing by were heard shouting, leave him alone. The children appear to be primary school students. Chief Executive Officer of the CPFSA, Lord Adams Thomas, has described the video as horrifying. The video was horrifying and it is more so disturbing to think that, based on the participation and reaction of the students, that they were unfazed by this type of violence. In cases of bullying, no one is left unscathed, she said. She explained that there could be long-term effects for both the victim and the perpetrators. The victim may experience immediate and devastating effects such as anxiety, depression, and a significant drop in self-esteem, which can also lead to long-term difficulties in personal relationships, academic performance, and even future employment prospects. While the perpetrators are also at risk of long-term negative effects, including social isolation and increased aggression, and they themselves may be victims of bullying in their own homes and are further perpetrating a cycle of abuse, Adams Thomas stated. We are calling on students to be brave and speak out regarding incidents of bullying or any other forms of abuse that you may see. Tell a trusted adult or call 211 and tell us anonymously what you have witnessed. But it is imperative that you say something to someone as the life and the mental well-being of your classmates may depend on it, she said. Adams Thomas further encouraged the persons to report any and all forms of child abuse using the 24-hour child abuse reporting hotline 211. Child abuse reports may also be made through WhatsApp or text at 876-878-2882, email report at childprotection.gov.jm, or by visiting any CPFSA parish office or through its social media pages, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at the CPFSA JM. MP Child's Residents Involved in South Manchester Protest Member of Parliament for South Manchester, Robert Chin, is criticizing some residents involved in Monday's demonstration along the Lancaster to Pusey Hill Road in the constituency. The residents mounted roadblocks to register their discontent over poor road conditions and the extended closure of the Prattville Primary and Infant School building, among other issues. Mr. Chin accused those involved of being the People's National Party supporters protesting under the guise of concerned citizens. They were heard shouting PMP slogans. I do not condone the blocking of roads because this is an unlawful act. But they would have better served the purpose of blocking the roads yesterday when all the empty barrels were leaving the constituency heading to the national arena. The Prattville Health Center was ordered close for repair by the Manchester Health Department. Users of that facility were asked to use the cross keys and the Newport Health Centers. The work should be completed by October. Prattville Primary suffered extensive damage by Hurricane Burial. They were put on the priority one list of schools to be repaired by the Ministry of Education. However, at the very last minute, the contractor backed out and they put a new contract in place. Unfortunately, the contractor was delivering the materials for the work, but were prevented from doing so because of the roadblocks. I did not bring bad roads to South Manchester. The PNP had their foot on the neck of this constituency for 31 years, stifling the life out of it. Businesswoman and a man charged with illegal gun possession granted bail. A St. Catherine businesswoman and a man who were charged in January after three illegal firearms were allegedly found in a motor vehicle in which they were traveling were on Monday offered bail. 33-year-old Sheena Price was offered $100,000 bail following an application by her attorney, Carl Phillips, in the Home Circuit Court. 27-year-old Kemar Bent was similarly offered $150,000 bail following an application by counsel Donna Hugh Martin. The accused and the two minors were charged with the possession of a prohibited weapon, unauthorized the possession of ammunition, and being part of a criminal organization in January. The minors were previously offered bail. 
the St. Catherine South Police say on January 21, about 1 a.m., they received the information that the quartet was traveling along the Old Harbor Bay Main Road in a white Toyota Pro Box motor car. The vehicle was intercepted by the police. During a search of the vehicle, three 9mm pistols with loaded magazines were allegedly found. The accused are scheduled to return to court on November 7. Thank you everyone for watching. See you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. for another news update.